Public Affairs very much thanks Rizidco, our sole corporate underwriter, for helping to make the production of this show possible. Violence in Chicago and Cook County seems to get worse by the day. Just when we think it couldn't get any worse, it seems to get worse. And so we have as our guest Bob Fioretti, who knows the city, who knows Cook County in and out. He's been an alderman to two, two, two terms, and he was so much of a thorn in various powers that be that they said, hey, let's get rid of this guy. You know, let's redistrict him out because he spoke up. He speaks truth to power. So he's going to tell us, tell us that he might, what he's thinking of doing politically and how that might tie in with your understanding of violence. Why is this violence going on? Why has it gotten worse, especially worse in the last year or two? Homicides, violent crime, carjackings. You get the picture. Chicago is in a state of crisis. Chicago is at crossroads. No person is safe, no community is safe, no business is safe. In every poll, public safety is the number one issue. And of course, the number one uh, job of a mayor is public safety and the protection of all the people. Law-abiding citizens and the police, I said in that uh, addressing That's the a mayor, group. the number one job of the mayor. Yes, absolutely. And who else, who else has the number one job of safety other than the mayor? Well, I think the uh, county board president has one too. Who's the, who's the Cook County board uh, president? Tony Preflinkel. Who's the mayor? Uh, Lori Lightfoot. So those two are intimately, or should be, involved in taking action to make the city and the and the county in which Chicago sits safer. And who else? Are there other names here? Well, when you look at it, because it depends on who controls the budgets. Lori Lightfoot controls the budget, of course, of the Chicago Police Department and all the other agencies. Tony Preckwinkle controls especially the budgets of the state's attorney's office. She's a mentor to Kim Fox. She controls the budget of the courts, Tim Evans, the chief judge. She controls the uh, budget of, uh, as I'm trying to go through it all, the, sheriff. uh, the sheriff's office, Tom especially Dart. Tom Dart. When we have less people in the jails and yet his budget keeps rising. So we've got to think about what's happening over there uh, and how they're going about this. And, uh, over where? Uh, between the county and the city. Okay, so and the Cook County Board President Preckwinkle, Mayor Lightfoot, but then you brought in a few others into the mix. You brought in Kim Fox. You said the state's attorney, right? Because how did she get there? She's been here as state's attorney. She was elected in 2016. She kind of came out of nowhere. She'd never run for an office before. So how, how did Kim Fox get to be state's attorney? Well, I, I think she, she ran against Anita Alvarez, uh, and Anita was tied up with the uh, uh, Laquan McDonald well, who shooting. Who put her there? Uh, Tony Preckwinkle who put her there. Because what was she before she ran for state's attorney? She worked in her office. She was uh, prior, she was an uh, assistant state's attorney. And but then prior I think to she that, was, but right, but the immediately prior, the she three years for, prior, she, she was the chief of staff. staff. She Absolutely. was the political person for, mm -hmm. for, Pre, for Preckwinkle. Right. She was first deputy. She was the chief of staff. And she was focusing on criminal justice matters, she said. And be right, for 13 years or so, she was an assistant state's attorney. But did she ever try a case, Bob? Well, I, that I don't know, but she did a lot in juvenile court. Juvenile, that was her specialty. Mm -hmm. Juvenile. Correct. Juvie, okay? That's where right. she was. So just remember that, folks. I don't think she ever tried a case. Certainly not in the adult arena. No, you know, criminal defense. Was she a prosecutor? Was she putting homicidal uh, perps away? I don't think so. I don't think so. Either. She was, okay. So she came out of nowhere. And as you, I'm sorry I interrupted. You said she was running in 2016 in the Democratic primary against Anita Alvarez mainly. Okay. Who else was she running against? I, I don't recall all of it, but I think maybe Howard Brookins okay. was running in that race and Cook County Commissioner Larry Sufferton was also running, I believe. But mainly, you, Alvarez was kind of damaged by Laquan McDonald. We won't get into that whole issue. So she had the benefit. When you run, if you run against a damaged candidate, 
a person who's got issues, less popular, that's a real plus, right? That's right. So, so she, and she did get by without a runoff, right? I'm not sure if that was the race where she, she squeaked by. Maybe she was by more, but she didn't have a runoff, right? right? She won that outright in the yeah. primary. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, and nobody really knew too much about her. We've since learned about her. What have we learned about Kim Fox since she became state's attorney? Uh, well, it seems like, well, how many scandals? What's happening in the office? Uh, Jesse uh, Smollett. No, case. the big picture. You know, who is uh, she? When you well, like, is she somebody who's known as a tough prosecutor, or she, is or, she a social worker, or is she a social justice warrior? What is she? Well, you know, I, I, that when we look at it, the perception of what happens in that office, it's a revolving door. Uh, people are out on uh, I bonds, no matter what the crime is. Uh, maybe, maybe electronic monitoring. What is an I bond? Uh, basically, they're released, uh, and they promise to show up. No, that's it. Nothing's at stake. No money down. No cash bond. It is personal recognizance. I promise I'll show up, and if I don't show up, I don't lose anything. Right. Right. Okay. So that's that's how that's run. Because Fox is a big believer, we shouldn't be asking people for bond to post bond, right? Correct. I mean, what if they've got like a, a, a rap sheet as long as my arm? They just keep getting, they get arrested, they get some convictions, and they don't always get arrested, always get a conviction. Sometimes they settle, sometimes they get off. But this person is, you can look at their rap sheet and say, they're kind of a career criminal, right? I, I, Could you do that? Because you know something about prosecuting, right? Yes, I do, and uh, and both the prosecution and defense, and okay. I've seen it often on what happens in the court system. And I think you summarize exactly what's happening with our court system right now. Uh, but that is not only being done just by her prosecution, but by the judges too over there, and by Tim Evans. Uh, really trying to move them out. Another name, folks. We, we've hit Prickwinkle, we hit Mayor Lightfoot, we've hit Kim Fox. Now Bob's introducing us to Tim, Tim Evans. Evans, the chief Who's judge. Tim? Chief judge uh, of what? Uh, of all of Cook County Court Circuit system. Court of Cook County. How yes. many judges in there? Well, I, 400 or so? And that's on the, uh, yes, well, I'll just say. When you're chief judge, what does that mean? Well, you have the power. You you make the appointments. You tell people where they can go, where they sit. Uh, if they don't do or, what you want, what do you do to them? Well, they could be banished off. Uh, you may live on the south side. You may end up uh, on a far north side uh, uh, of Cook County courtroom. So if Tim Evans doesn't think it's wise to require bail, no matter what the law says, he almost by fiat can do what Tony wants and what Preckwink, what Kim wants and what Tony Preckwinkle wants and now what Lightfoot wants. They just on their own basically set up a system in which bail is not required, right? And that's what happened. No matter how dangerous. Right. Well, see, because uh, uh, just, Evans, people will see him on TV. He says, hey, we have this here constitution. So we have a presumption of innocence. You believe in the presumption of innocence, right? Absolutely. Does that mean you can't require bail for dangerous criminals? No, and, and I Does think you have, to, that? you have to look at the record of the individual, what type of a crime, are they a flight risk, are they a uh, danger to the community? Right. All those factors should go into it and not just give uh, an I bond or out you go uh, the, through the revolving door of the Cook County criminal justice system. So this, we sort of stop there. This is a major problem that we have because the first step in the, in the criminal justice system is what, if, a, if you think a crime has been committed and you're the police, you investigate, right? And then if you have probable cause, you arrest. And if you think the person is dangerous, you detain. Is this... And then you have to prosecute. And then you have to And then prosecute. you have to find a, uh, an adequate sentence. Right. So, right. Yes, yeah, so you don't just say immediately two years probation. You hear that? That means you're out community supervision. You're not going to prison, right? Right. And if you're released, if you're released uh, on, a, on an I bond, you don't put up anything for that bond. And it means 
while you're awaiting trial, you're not detained. You're not in the jail. I mean, and who has a lot to say about that? That would be Cook County Board President Preckwinkle. That would be Kim Fox because she, she goes before the judge. If she doesn't make an argument for bond, the judge is not going to do that, is he? No. He's going to say, you didn't give me an argument. So he, and, and the public defender, of course, he's on the other side. So, okay, so if we're not investigating, if we're not arresting, if we're not detaining, and you say we're not prosecuting, we're not sentencing, we then come to, are we incarcerating? Are we putting people in prison once they've been through this whole process and adjudicated as guilty, are we? Well, my answer is we don't do it often enough or we don't do it the right way. We need to get violent criminals off the streets. It's as simple as that. What's now, her other position? Did we mention? Well, now she's the chair of the Democratic Party, so she has all the committeemen, or generally 90% of them will support her because there may be access to jobs, opportunities, grants. She's been that for the last four years, but before that, wasn't she vice chair under Berrios? Right. She, she's been a political, everybody, look, I like Tony. She's a nice person, right? Doesn't mean I agree with her philosophy. I'm a journalist. We're supposed to challenge the people. I'm going to challenge Bob here. But, um, you know, so, but she appears that way like this nice elderly little lady who couldn't harm a flea. Is that right? I mean, she is the chair of the Cook County Democratic Party. So if she wants to punish you, Ron Manuel said this, in politics we punish our enemies and we reward our friends. Does Tony reward her friends? I would say so. Does she, she does. punish her enemies? Uh, I would say so too on okay. both counts. So, I've heard stories in the last few weeks uh, uh, on people that are opposed to her and she won't even talk to them and uh, uh, they can be standing two feet apart at the same time. She can time. banish them if, she, if, there's a, if they're in the Cook County system. There's so many ways she can affect their employment, their salary. Absolutely. I mean, she is... Really, she is the pharaoh with a capital P, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, she is up here. It's 170000 that she pulls in a year as Cook County Board President, but the perks to that position, that power, wow. I mean, if you wanted power, Bob, you would be trying to be Cook County Board. No, not even. So I was going to say you'd be Cook, Cook County Board President. You may want to do that, but really the power is be chair of the Cook County Democratic Party, right? Correct. And she's both. Yes. So if she gets if projected, the primary election is June 28th. Early voting has already started. If Preckwinkle becomes the nominee of the Democratic Party, as of now, she wouldn't have any opposition because nobody filed to run as a Republican Correct. in the Cook County Board President race, right? Right. And I, and I think all the top offices, uh, there's nobody filing in the Republican uh, party. But the, the powers that be, we won't go through all the details, but the powers that be in the Republican Party, when that happens, have the authority to get together and to appoint somebody to be their nominee, right? Correct. For Cook County Board President. But they have to wait till June 28th to be sure, to be sure that the, there's not a write-in person who gets that mm -hmm. nomination. So mm -hmm. right after June 28th, they start huddling if nobody's written in as a candidate. And they still have to get signatures. And they still have to get the signatures. And so somebody, have you had conversations about this? Well, people, you know, people have approached me because um, they, they know where I stand on the issues. They know I'm an anti-corruption candidate. They know I'm a, a vote for the people. People have talked to me about both the mayor's office and uh, the same for the county board presidency. Uh, you know. These are difficult, challenging times that we're in. Uh, I see both budgets are out of sync, even though uh, the county budget, with all the money that's coming in from the federal government, with all the money that's coming in uh, both to this, uh, the city uh, budget, you know, we have a lot of issues that are going to be addressed. The pension deficit is, just, uh, is a, a problem. How we bring economic development to all of our communities is still a problem. People want to avoid Illinois. They don't want to come here. Uh, why? Because crime is the issue. 
Yeah, we have some slides in that. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at slide one. Okay. I mean carjackings. So say you come to Illinois, say you rent a car, you stop in the city somewhere, anywhere, south side, west side, north side, you could get jacked, car jacked, right? I mean, if we look at these numbers for 2019, 603 carjackings in Chicago, and in 2020, 2020 it went up to 1313, 13, and 2021 it went to 1830. So 1200 in two years, roughly 200%. I mean, this chart says 200% over 10 years, but it's really 200% in two years. I mean, what the hell happened here? Isn't people, you would think the Illinois legislature and the Chicago mayor's office and the Cook County board president and Fox and Evans would be going like, oh my God, let's get together. Let's do something. Let's, let's find these folks. Let's prosecute them. Let's, uh, you know, sentence them. Let's impose stiff sentences. Is that what's happening? No, it's not. And first of all, none of them are talking about uh, the sentencing that we have, number one. And number two, Nobody is getting together. Uh, that is the biggest problem that we face. And the county board president should be the person to bring everybody into our office to talk about these issues and how we are going well, to address it. I challenge them. you on that, Bob. I think they're getting together and they're talking about it, but they're saying, hey, hey. Evan says, hey, if this person, they don't really develop a full brain until they're 25. Can we really hold these young adults as responsible? We got to give them a chance. That's what Evans is saying. He's, he's telling us that. I mean, he gives interviews. So I'm not making this up. Go find it. I'm okay. Come on on, Chief Judge Tim Evans. He, so they're getting together. Lightfoot, originally, she was taken, when she got elected, she was saying, I'm not for this bond, just letting them out. She was having these Monday accountability Mondays, then accountability Tuesdays, then it became nothing accountable, okay? But initially, she was fighting with she was taken on Preckwinkle. She was taken on Fox. And then what happened? Well, they realized that she was elected in 2019, life it was, but in 2020 there was this primary and she was gonna to have to decide who to endorse. So she endorsed Fox, her fellow Democrat, right? So no, life doesn't fight with them. And no. Preckwinkle and Evans, they're, and Fox, they're all on the same page. Tom Dart was fighting for a little while. He said, I can't monitor these people. I don't have the resources, but he's not saying that now. So the, we don't have a sheriff. Come on, Tom, you can tell us. We, there's no sheriff in Dodge, really? I right. mean, so you're hey, saying these should get have, together. But, but we have to have some strong voice for the people and they're not here for, for, Well, that uh, would be you, Bob. I mean, if you run for Cook County Board President and you run on the Republican ticket and there's funding as there may be, I don't know who could fund that, but somebody, okay? <laughs> somebody. Somebody could. Right. Who's that or, guy? Or yeah, for, yeah, that or that guy who's got like a net worth of, what is it, $30 billion? He could help you out. He could help you out. Oh, sure. Okay, so then you'd have funding, then you'd have name recognition, then you'd have a true contest. Isn't that what democracy is supposed to be? A contest, right? Right, it should be. but Competing ideas. On one idea, we just keep doing more of the same, okay? Because and we continue doing more of the same here yeah, in this look, county. Look, it's just getting any better. Life would said COVID, COVID. That's why we had so much violence. Let's look at, um, let's look at the slide, slide three. Nearly all Chicago crimes are up versus 2021 and, and week 20. Week 20 for 2020. 2022 versus week 20, um, the reported criminal complaints through week 20, 2022 versus 2021, theft is up 67%, motor vehicle theft up 41%, burglary up 34%. Look, homicides in 2021 in Chicago were 800, and that was, that was down slightly because it was 800 in 2020. That's not good. Mm -hmm. It went down a few, but 800 homicides, 1,000. Here's my point. I mean, and these are the reported ones. Yes, we, yeah. A lot of people do not report. Oh, uh, because what's the point? Sentence. The arrest rate is, is in the single digits. Right. So you go through an investigation, you have the police out there, nobody's caught, and, if, and, and you risk, you, you, there's no witness protection. So you risk uh, bodily harm if you file a complaint and you go to court. So. The system has broken down, Bob. It sure has. You have to fix it, right? 
Yes. You need some recruits. You need, if you were to run for Cook County Board President, you need somebody running for mayor who gives you the opposite point of view. I mean, you got the life of you. She capitulated. Um, I mean, I don't know. Who do we have out there? Kim Buckner. You know Kim? I know. Yes. Cam. Sorry. Cam. 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 Mm -hmm. State Rep. Cam Buckner, Democrat, been in the legislature for four years. Right. He's now running for mayor. What's he running on? Is he running on this, what we're talking about? Arrest, detain, prosecute, sentence. No, he's running on a very progressive uh, platform. He's woke. Mm -hmm. He's woke. Okay. But Sean Ford, he's going to run, they say. And after the primary, it's, it's said, he said he's going to run for mayor, declare. Is he running on what you're talking about? I think uh, he and Cam probably are going to be ideologically similar, so I don't see any difference between life would, them. Life would can change. He's been doing this all the time. Right. So I don't know, Bob. I mean, who? Like Paul Vallis? You think he might be the guy? Well, if Paul jumps in, I, I think he would like to jump into the race, but I'm not sure. Even though he says he will, uh, privately, it's still uh, something to see what, what the future will bring. He said on my show, he said he thought he'd likely to green light that, I'm paraphrasing, uh, around Memorial Day weekend. So it's May 24th, we'll find out perhaps right. this weekend. What if he ran for mayor? What if, he, if you ran for Cook County Board President? Um, you know, mayor is a nonpartisan thing. Cook County Board President would be partisan. You're running as a Republican. Do you think you have a team? Well, we'd have to see. Paul and I would have to sit down on that. There, you know, there are a few other candidates that are out there. Willie yeah. Wilson, Ray Lopez. You're not for the kinds of things that happened, obviously, with Burge and others. You're for good, clean policing. You're for policing that's respectful of the citizens' rights, right? Absolutely. But you can do that and you can have proactive policing. You can go after criminals and do it in a... In a, in, a, in a legal way, in a constitutional way, right? Uh, you hit it right on the head. I've, uh, I've always suggested that we should have uh, good beat cops, foot patrols, bicycles. Um, I, I do believe in the broken window theory, and it was a uh, essay that was written probably in the late 80s, early 90s, about how you clean up neighborhoods, how you gotta get rid of the graffiti, how you gotta make uh, neighborhoods of clean, good, uh, I, I think it impacts the psyche of, of everyone, not just what happens with a shooting, but uh, a young kid who walks out of, to go to school and, and he's walking to school and piles of trash and garbage are in his neighborhood. That affects him too, or boarded up houses along the way. All of that uh, impacts on a psyche of people growing up. Well, let's take a slight digression because you've raised kids and other things that affect them as they're growing up. You didn't say it, but to avoid gangs, to avoid going in the illegal path. Well, one thing would be good if we had schools that taught people in Chicago, young kids, how to read. So let's take a look at slide four. I mean, because people don't talk about this enough. CPS, this says that only about a quarter of Chicago students at CPS score proficient or above on national testing. So if we look at the reading scores on the top part of that graph, we'll see all students, all students taken white, black, Hispanic, only 25% are proficient. But in terms of reading, whites are doing better, not great at 56%, but blacks only 15%. 15% of our fourth graders, these are fourth graders, but 11th graders would be comparable, read at grade level. I mean, if you're a fourth grader, what is it, you're like nine years old or so? Mm -hmm. I don't know, 10? No, maybe a little bit, yeah, probably 10. 10, and, and you got a choice, you're not learning how to read, and that's what that means when you say 15%, only 15% read at grade level, and I can go to a gang, and my family situation is so good, I'm signing up for the gang because this is not a way. I'm not going to go well, anywhere if I can't read. So my point is, my point is, why the, why is not the mayor of the city of Chicago looking at this chart, chart four, from wire points, okay, and saying, what the hell? That's doing something. I've been here, she should say, three years. This is a this is a this is a, this is a test out of 2019. 
but I'm sure it's no better in 2020, 2021. So your point, these kids need some help, but the first thing they need in Chicago is to be taught how to read. Fabulous. So we need reform. We need a serious reform. The people who talk about we need police reform, I understand that, we've been doing it, we should continue to work on that, but now we need a different kind of reform. We now need to reform the state's attorney and say, you need to prosecute. We now need to reform the chief judge and say, you need to understand when bond's appropriate. You, and if you can't do that, maybe somebody else should be chief judge. And by the way, he's up for election again in September. He's up for retention, which means he could lose his judgeship if he's not retained in November. So this is reform. This is real reform. What we need, I think, Bob, what we need in Chicago and Cook County is a real reform party. We don't need more woke. We need to be de-woke, I guess if that's a word. Like we deregulate, we de-woke. I mean, I, again, how can you have a state's attorney who doesn't believe in prosecution? How can you have a chief judge who doesn't believe in judging? Judging is you have defense over here and a prosecution over there. You don't have the prosecutor playing defense attorney because then nobody's prosecuting. I mean, you're a lawyer. What is wrong with this system? Is it all upside down? Well, uh, since, since we all grew up in this system and we've seen the changes that are happening, and they're not good changes for, uh, I mean, we need economic opportunity in our communities. We need to bring people jobs. We need to people, uh, uh, young kids to learn how to read, write, the, the basics. Um, you know, we talk about STEM schools, science, technology, engineering, math. Those are essential in this new day and age. We need competition all around. We better make sure we have competition for state's attorney soon. We have competition for Cook County Board President, competition for mayor. We didn't mention, we should have mentioned Ray Lopez because he is somebody, he's Latino. He is somebody talking somewhat similar to you about being a strong enforcer of, of our laws, of arresting, of detaining, of prosecuting. I mean, you got a shout out for Ray Lopez. Is, do you agree with me? Is he, is he a different kind of voice? He's running for mayor. Well, you know, I, and I think, though, once you do the sentencing, and we can't forget about that because uh, we need to have in our criminal justice system those that are sentenced, uh, we, we need to f find ways that they develop skills in, in jail and uh, come out and... I, I always had several job fairs every year. One was for my uh, community at large. I, I, sometimes I would have them... Uh, in specific areas, and so I have more than three, but then I have one for, just for veterans, and I have one for uh, uh, ex-offenders, uh, so they can get jobs. And I was always surprised at the uh, good reception that we would have uh, from businesses to help people have those type of jobs. Okay, folks, uh, we gotta come back, uh, and we hope that Bob Ferry will come back, update us on his plans, whether he's running for an office, perhaps the Republican nominee for Cook County Board President, perhaps mayor. We don't know, Bob. You don't know. You're going to have to do some deep thinking, right? And deep thinking involves my wife, uh, involves uh, close friends, uh, and it involves, uh, uh, I, I, I do believe I have a base. I do believe I have name recognition. Uh, the only thing holding back is uh, how we raise the money and what we need to do. All right. So. Bob, you come back and you come back next week and every week to Public Affairs.